Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Coming to you on Monday, April the 25th. The year's 2022. Let's talk trading. Master of One, Part 10 with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. Walmart. Uh, so, what are you mastering this week? <laughs> talking to you about it a few minutes ago and that the bad habit is that when trades are going against me um i generally generally just try to cut my losses very very quickly and uh for the last oh uh, last uh probably last week or so i've been holding on to them a little bit longer than i normally would based on my what my trading plan says and uh you know sometimes it works out good for you sometimes it doesn't and, and you know it just uh I got to go and master my trading plan again, you know, and I just got to go and do what I say I do. You know, I, I like that expression, do what I say I do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, I, just... <laughs> I guess there's a reason now. There Was it something you were saying on the chart that makes you do what you were doing? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It was greed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was something on the chart. And the thing is, what happened was is that, uh, if we look at today's pound, you know, we got down to like 2708, something like that. And I went and took a short uh, coming at using the uh, high, low, low, high box. And I took a short coming out of the bottom end of the box, which I know is not something that uh, you do, but it is something that I do. And it's usually been very successful for me. In that. And so it was coming out of the bottom end. The second, uh, the second reason for entering was that it was at around, at the time, around 27 uh oh nine twenty something like that and uh and so it's sort of like hmm i got two things we know that if it breaks the 10 line normally it's going to go down to the double zero because it likes to go check out the double zero maybe it doesn't hit it but it gets close that would be a good trade so i had a confluence of uh of reasons to go in nothing wrong with the entry problem was the exit you know, and I was so confident for it to go and go my direction. And then we had two explosive M5 candles in a row of uh, one was almost 20 pips and the other one, I think the range of it was 20 pips, you know, and, you know, and that you come back one, two, two hours ago, um, if you have that chart up. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, you know, as soon as I went and started doing that, fool get out now what i did do was i did go and i did hedge it plus plus uh uh so my trade i had one trade going to the south and what it is i took two trades to the north so i was able to go and compensate for it but what i should have done was when it was clearly obvious <laughs> to every human being on the planet that mm -hmm. this thing was not going to come down at least in the short term get out, you know, mitigate the loss, take a small loss of, you know, five, even 10 or, you know, 15 pips. But no, I let that thing go against me, you know, a bunch of pips. And part of it was, I think, I again, seeing what you see on the chart, my overall number was positive because I had those hedges in there, um, that, you know, that were going in the other direction. So looking at my trading account, yeah, I'm positive. I'm net positive. That's okay. It's going to come back. And it didn't come back, you know, and eventually it did, but it like an hour and a half later. And it's like, okay, at some point in time, you just got to say, okay, I got to cut my losses here. And then you take on the big loss, but I also had the, the big win. So overall for the day, I'm, I'm net positive, but it's sort of like, you know, if you think about it, if I would have gotten out what my way my trading plan said to get out, uh, I would have been up at like 25 pips above what I was up. So it's just uh, silly nonsense like that. And that's, again, master of one, massive. And I'm going to go and say master my trading plan because that's what my trading plan says to do. Now, could I have gotten lucky, got out at the top on the high, and then, you know, and then all of a sudden go and take another trade to the south up at the top and, you know, and actually make you money go in the other direction? Sure, that, that's a possibility if the market does that. But the thing is, that's you know, that's just a, a, a what I'll call just a random, a random act of kindness by the market towards you. You know, and, uh, and the market's usually not very kind. <laughs> yeah, well, so, but but back you said master your trading plan. I think um, 
let's see if we can be a little more specific for the boys and girls and non-binary traders out there um because you're trading plans so are you talking the uh entry the you know your trade entry or or your charting or are you talking your money management risk slash risk management i mean what specifically my exit plan see now i kind of combine things that people don't do i call my exit plan is money management slash your your uh your risk management i kind of combine them together and uh and call it just a, and just call that my exit plan because one way or the other you got to get out of trade so i just take those two elements and i don't really differentiate very much from it other than what i do in the situation i'm in so what had happened was is that you know when it ran away started to run away from me okay the first part of my trading plan is to go and jump in in the other direction and because uh, a lot of times especially with the pound let's say uh, let's take a say i take a short and let's make the numbers easy i take a short at 10 okay and um up one or two pips and then all of a sudden it just turns around and rifles back in the other direction and i get a signal and it has to be a clear signal for a long well what i will do is i will go in with you know with a long at that point plus another long so now i'm basically hedge plus one in the long direction and what i normally do is what my trading plan says to do is pay attention to what the market's doing if the market shows no signs that it's going to come back for a reversal just exit the reversal uh, or not the reversal i'm sorry if it shows no sign of uh, coming back down they just get out of your short and just minimize the amount that you're going to lose there okay and and then you've more than covered in the long direction well that's where i messed up i didn't go and jump out of those shorts now because i was you know you know i was i was long plus one it didn't make any difference i made money but I, I guess i'm beating myself up a little bit because the reality is i could have made a lot more money if i had just gone and followed my play trading plan but it became totally obvious like i said before to every human being on the planet that this thing wasn't coming down in the short term just get out you know just just take the loss on it and say that's just life take the loss on it but i guess there was some greed involved as it i know this is going to come back and you know at the top when it became pretty pretty clear to me anyway that it hit the top it wasn't going to go really any further i got out you know with a nice a nice um healthy profit you know and at that point i went and got out of my short as well at the same time you know um that part of it i probably did okay but it was a part of not getting out way but so for instance um, for me i should have gotten out somewhere around twenty seven fifteen, as opposed to getting out all the way up at you know 2745 or something like that you know so that was a big big loss on that one particular trade again because i'm i was hedged and i you know hedge plus one i was okay but you know it's just foolishness and it was you know you say well you can justify some well the market moves stuff that you couldn't make that decision no you know does that happen from time to time sure it does didn't happen this time so i'm just owning up to my mistake of uh not doing what i was supposed to do was that clear yeah exactly okay. yeah no no that yeah. was that was specific it's just that you know um when it comes to exiting, um, you know, some people will take the exit signal from the chart. Some people take the exit signal from the P&L. Some people will, will flip flop back and forth. So I just wanted um, to right. under, let, let people know um, how you were, how you normally um, exit. Yeah. Yeah, let me talk about that for a second because I think we got into that a little bit on Thursday and Friday of last week. And, you know, most people, and I would say most people, but yeah, probably most people in Forex anyway, not not in other markets, but in the Forex market, most people do their, their you know, their, when they exit out, they do it based on pips. I don't, okay? I don't do it that way. And, you know, and people say, well, you should, you should always go and do it on pips because it, it it can go and create a wall between you and your emotion and so on and so forth you know um but at the same time for me i look at that as a detriment 
And the reason why is because I care about the thing that matters most to me is not how many tips I've made for the day. Doesn't that doesn't mean diddly squat to me. What matters to me is at the end of the day, I've made X dollars or I've prevented myself from losing more than Y dollars. Because that's what really matters. At the end of the day, what really matters is the money in the bank. So I manage my exits based on dollars. And, you know, and so that works for me. Other people it may not work for. And I think part of the reason why I do it that way is because um, if you look at, like, like a lot of these, you know, you look at a lot, a lot of these uh, um plans and stuff like that that come along, you know, for like, uh, uh, I want to say like timeshares and things like that. Uh, what happens is they, what do they do? They sell you points and then you go and take your vacation by some points. But why do they do that? Or you go and, you know, I used to work for Club Med of all places in Carrington College as a, as a, I think the six months um, in, uh, in, um, yeah, I won't say which club it was, but in one of the clubs. And what I saw was that you were given a certain number of points for how many drinks you could drink, drink in a day. Well, why do they do that? Because what it does is it separates you from the money. People understand money. They don't understand points. So that's the reason why I do that. That's interesting. And I just, you know, I, a, you know, the thing is, but the problem with that is now, if you're the type of person that you are highly emotional, that may not be the right way to do it because you're going to say, oh, shoot, I'm down $500. What am I going to do now? My account size is only $3,000. You know, that's one sixth of my account, you know, but, you know, but for me, it's sort of like, I'm down $500. I need to get out, you know, <laughs> because I need to preserve my account. And that's why, you know, that it's like, I've, I say this on just about every video I'm on, the, I'm on with you, uh, the TRO, and that is that the most important thing in trading is preserving your capital. And I'll say it again, the most important thing is preserving your capital. So, you know, so for me, I know at the beginning of the day, this is how much I am willing to go and risk for the entire day you know, uh, in terms of money. It's not like you go to Las Vegas and you go to gamble, you know, you go there with, you know, let's say you're, you take a bigger roll of the in, you got five grand in your pocket and you're willing to lose five grand. Well, for me anyway, if I was to go do that, now I'm not a gambler. I don't, I don't go to uh, Las Vegas, but if I was, I, I know what I would do. I'd put the five grand in my pocket and the moment that's all gone, I don't care if that's the first day I'm there for a week. I'm not going to go and take another bet because I need to preserve my capital so I can come back to Vegas next time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or a better example is if you're doing it in England. In England, they, they, if you're down and you don't pay off the house, they don't even let you. They take your passport away from you, and you can't leave the country until you pay it off. <laughs> Probably a good reason for that because they probably had enough people skipping. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah, most likely. But, but in any case, you know, that's why I do what I do in terms of uh, I do it in dollars. Other people, you know, will do it in terms of points. And the other reason why I kind of do it in dollars, anyway, is because I've done a little bit of not much, but a little bit of trading. And my first experience with any type of trading was through my dad, and he always traded the stock market. And that's obviously not done in pips of points or anything like that or if there's if it is points it's you know it's it's a one-to-one -one ratio between u.s dollars and points at least in the uh in the in the u.s equity markets so it's a, it's a, you know it's the same thing so I, i'm i kind of think that way anyway so i see we've got another big uh range day here on the on the pound uh, 135 pips but guess what fellow traders <laughs> the fastest 15 minutes in trading is up so um there will be a test and the test is what does walmart say the most important thing is <laughs> and you know i guess when i sit down at the trading terminal i always think that you know it's not what i trade it's how i trade it so always remember and never forget it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one, over and out.